water turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, none like you. Oh, my God is greater, my God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. My God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. My God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us, and if our God is with us, then what can stand against, and if our God is for us, could ever stop us and if our God is with us and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what can stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what can stand against And what can stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God, and if our God is for us, 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 and if our God, and if our God is for then, then who could ever stop? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? What can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Nobody, nobody, nowhere. What can stand against? Hallelujah. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand to our feet for the reading of the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes, how many of you know that our God is risen? Jesus Christ is God incarnate. The Bible tells us that he rose on the third. Bibles to Matthew chapter number 20. 
you're hearing, uh, verses 1 through 13, we always stand for the reading of the Gospels, the reading of the Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish virgin, virgins took their lamps but uh, did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they, shall, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all of the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are gone out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourself. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Verse 10. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, yes, the bridegroom arrived, the virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later the others came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. So far, the scriptures. Father, bless this witness. Lord, charge it with your power so that at the end of this exercise, oh God, your name is glorified, your people edified, and an alarm sounded for sinners. Father, bless our ears that we will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church and bless our hearts, oh God, that your word will fall on good ground, take root, and bring, off, bring forth fruit. This, this prayer... We pray in the name of he who died, rose again, and lives evermore, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to share with you from the message this morning. Of course, this is our last uh, sermon installment in the series, Church is God's Idea. Church is God's Idea. And the subject for this morning, you can't have my oil. You can't have my oil. This particular passage is a very, very familiar passage uh, of scripture. And of course, this is the last one in our series and shares with us one of the major uh, aspects of who the church is. We talked about the church being the called out ones, those who are called out and set aside. Remember, you are not like the world. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. So you wonder why people who love God dress a little differently. It is because you know that you belong to him. And I remember a long time ago when we were, when, uh, yeah, it was many years ago, young, young, young teenager, there was an older woman in the church. And the older woman uh, used to tell us, uh, the reason you wear your skirt below your knee, that, you can tell that was a long time ago. She said, the reason that you have your uh, uh, dress below your knee is because before you get married, your knees belong to God. But after you get married, they belong to your husband. But either way, you, you need to keep them covered up. And what she was trying to tell us is that we don't dress like the world. Now, we long past, past that, but there's a point to it. People should be able to know that there's something different about you. There should be something different about your speech. You don't go around using profanity. Why? Because that is profane. And the Spirit of the Lord lives on the inside of you. Paul said, know ye not that your bodies are temple of the Holy Ghost? 
That means when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Godhead dwells on the inside of us. And the Bible says he will not dwell in an unclean temple. And so we sanctify ourselves. He called us and set us apart, set us aside. And the Bible says so that we are holy unto the Lord. He calls us saints. And, you know, for some people that seems like, you know, a bad word. You know, you think you're holier than thou. No, we don't think we're holier than thou, but we do believe that we are holy. Because Jesus himself said that we should be holy even as he is holy. And so the Bible tells us that not only are we the called out ones, but we are the body of Christ. And we looked at that last week in the body of Christ. And we looked at what it meant for the be, to be members and members in particular. And as members in the body, every person or every member has a function. So everybody's not the preacher, everybody's not the singer, everybody's not first impression. People have different gifts in the body. And as we move in these gifts in the body, then we are operating under the uh, headship of Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ is the head of the body. And so we looked at last week the church as the body of Christ. And so this week we're looking at Jesus Christ as, uh, we're looking at the church as the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ. And we're looking at uh, Jesus Christ as the bridegroom. Last week the Bible tells us, uh, and we looked at the fact that he was the head of the body. Now we're looking uh, when we look at the church as the bride of Christ, that Jesus is the bridegroom. Now, as we look back on this particular text, what we find is that this text is in the series of texts that deal with the coming of the Lord. How many know that Jesus is coming again? We don't hear that a whole lot, but Jesus is coming again. And because Jesus is coming again, there's certain things that we, as the bride of Christ, must do. Just found out this morning that one of, the, one of a, a friend of mine, she is engaged, a friend of this church, she's engaged. Well, now she begins to prepare for the marriage. And that's what we do as the bride of Christ. Uh, he has not come yet. And that, when he comes back for the bride, that's when Jesus comes again in the rapture. But right now, we are preparing for him to come. The Bible talks about that he will present to himself a church without spot and without wrinkle. And so we are in the stage, we are in the process of preparing for the bridegroom to come. This is what we see in this text. And all of the, the parables and the teachings of Jesus prior to this, we start seeing probably around chapter 21, 22, he starts to talk about the coming of the Lord. Jesus is coming again. And the Bible tells us that he's coming like a thief in the night. But he's coming like a thief in the night for those who are not looking for him. It is important it is important, it is important for us to both watch and pray. We look at, you know, Jesus told his disciples, he said, you can look in the sky and you can tell if it's going to rain. You can tell what kind of weather it's going to be. He said, but you cannot judge the signs of the time. And then he begins, especially in chapter 24, to talk about that there will be wars and rumors of wars. And surely we see that today, and this is not new, but, you know, with the age of uh, cable news and so forth and technology, we are on the front lines of the war in Ukraine. And they don't pay as much attention, but there's a lot going on in Haiti. And I saw a little piece on that, and more people have died in Haiti than died in the entire war so far in Ukraine. Uh, they're fighting against each other. And how many of you know that a house that standeth or fighteth against itself cannot stand? 
How many of you know that if you're fighting against your husband, that house ain't going to hold up? How many know if you're fighting against your church, that's going to put a lot, of a lot of strain on it? Wherever you go and there is no unity, there is no success. There is no success in whatever your goals are. You must come together. And so what we see is Jesus talking to his disciples and Jesus telling the stories of his coming again, how we should look at the signs of the time and how we should see that something is, uh, uh, is awry, that something is, uh, is at, at, at front, that something is about to happen. We don't know exactly what it is. Is we don't, but we know that something is not the way that it used to be. Anytime we could be in a situation where a uh, former president is, uh, 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 the case has been laid out, and people say, we don't even want to read it. We don't want to hear nothing about it. We don't want to see it. We don't want to know what's going on. We'd rather stay where we are in the dark. We'd rather believe a lie than believe the truth. We're in a time where you could knock on the wrong door because you got the wrong address and somebody will shoot you through the door. We're living in a time where even when you send your children to school, you pray over them before you go because you don't know what maniac might show up that day at the school. When you go into the uh, uh, grocery store, come to the house of the Lord, it is a new environment. It's almost as if though that a murderous spirit has been released into our society. If we can't read the signs of the time and know that we're on the edge, on the precipice of something, then the Bible is saying, I'm going to tell you what it is. Jesus is soon to come. The Bible tells us from the very beginning that when Adam sinned, that God had a plan. And God's plan was that he would redeem man back to himself. His plan was that even though Adam had fallen, that he would bring Adam in back uh, in, in good relationship and in, and in, in, in good relationship with him. How many of you know sin separates? Sin separates you from God. How many of you know that when you sin, you are separating yourself from God? But it is the blood of Jesus that has already been shed that gives us forgiveness, not just for the sins we've already committed, but for the sins we haven't committed yet. But how many know it separates you from God? Well, you don't have to say anything, but when you sin, you feel different. You feel like Adam who wanted to hide himself. You're ashamed. And if you're not ashamed, then the Holy Ghost is not working. Because one of the purposes of the Holy Ghost is to bring conviction. I heard the preacher talking this week, and I agree with him, because this is one of the prayers I pray real often. Created me a clean heart. How many know just because you got a clean heart today don't mean you're going to have a clean heart tomorrow? There's a lot of things that happen. So every day we say, Lord, create a clean, create in me a clean heart. And then he said, and renew a right spirit within me. I had a right spirit, but Lord, today, renew a right spirit within me. He begins to say, Lord, whatever you do, don't take your presence from me. You know, I don't know about you, but I can't live without the Lord. I see people do it, and I just don't know how they do it because I could not live without him. It is in him I live, I move, and I have my being. I cannot live without the Lord. So it's not hard for me to pray. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, wash me clean again this day. Lord, cause me to see your way. God, cause me to have a hunger and thirst for you. God, give me the right vision for my life today because God, I want to be pleasing in your sight. Not some days, but every day. Why? Because you want to be ready when he comes. Anybody want to be ready when Jesus comes? So the Bible tells us that in this particular parable, and in this parable it tells the story. Uh, so in, we're in the context, we're in the context of, this, of, of Jesus talking about his coming again. And he begins by saying that the kingdom of heaven is like unto this. And, he, and so he talks about it, just so you don't, just in case if you didn't know, the kingdom of heaven, is, you see it interchangeably 
interchangeably use the kingdom of God. And how many of you know wherever there's a kingdom, there must be a king? And not only must there be a king, but there is a citizenry. And so we are what's called dual citizens. We're both citizens of the kingdom of God, and we're citizens of the United States or the earthly realm. There is a spiritual realm in which we uh, are connected to as a part or as a result of our regeneration, as a, point of, uh, a part of our being born again, as a point of our being baptized by the Holy Spirit, then we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And wherever there is a kingdom, there is a one who governs. There is a king who governs. And so Jesus Christ governs the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible says that he begins to talk about this parable, which is a story in which uh, we find Jesus, is, Jesus used as a teaching technique. So if you follow along with the parable, then you can understand what it is that Jesus is teaching. And so the Bible talks about these bride, these uh, uh, those who have were coming uh, to the uh, banquet, to the banquet. In other words, uh, and some of you probably know, but uh, in other parts of the world, especially during this time, uh, marriages celebration went on for days. You didn't just come to, to the wedding and go to the reception, but they went on for days. I remember when I was in Africa for three months and we were at a wedding and people started the day before and that, and that day we were there the entire day. And of course they had started to cut some things short in their uh, uh, culture and in their practices. So it cut it down to a couple of days or so. But weddings were a big community event. And so you have these uh, virgins who were uh, waiting to go into the wedding banquet, but they couldn't go in until the bridegroom came. And so they had to wait for the bridegroom until he came in order for them to go in. And as such, we, the body of Christ, is waiting for Jesus Christ to come again. Because when he comes again, he's going to take us out of this world into heaven. The Bible says that when he comes, he's going to come with the shout of an archangel, with a voice, a loud trumpet will sound. The Bible said he will crack the sky. And when he comes, the, the dead in Christ shall rise, and those, those that remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. A dramatic event that God promised us that would happen. He says that Jesus, Jesus said when, uh, 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 the Bible said the angels declared that when he went up into heaven after his resurrection, that in like manner he's coming again. Somebody ought to shout, Jesus is coming again. Part of what we should do as the body of Christ, as the, uh, 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 as the church or as the bride of Christ is to prepare for his coming. So the Bible tells us in this parable that there were five wise and five foolish. And the thing that makes me a little concerned about this number is that 50% of the people waiting for God, waiting for Jesus to come back, 50% were people who uh, were foolish. 50% were wise, but half were foolish. Set, and, and the Bible tells us that they were virgins, which means they were clean. For us, which means they were saints, means they were holy, means they were sanctified and set aside. But the Bible says that they were foolish. I don't know about you, but I would not sit up in the house of the Lord in the body of Christ and be labeled a foolish virgin. Because when Jesus come, we want to go back with him. And so the Bible said that they were foolish virgins, five, five wise and five foolish. The Bible said that the wise took vessels with them and in the vessels with them, they had oil. And they carried the oil because in the lamp there was oil, but they carried with them another vessel and the other vessel had oil in it. 
And the purpose for it is so that when the wick would go down and the oil was burning, that they could take the oil that they brought and put it into the lamp so that the lamp would shine bright. The oil was used as fuel for the lamp. How many of you know that you are the light of the world? Glory to God. How many of you know that the light of God shines through you? How many of you know that you are the salt of the earth? But there is a fuel that is used to give power to the light. The light will not shine without the oil. You know, it's kind of hard for us to know, uh, understand this practically because we don't go around with kerosene lamps anymore. But back then, and even in early times in this, in this country, we had no electricity. And as a result, you had to carry a source of light. And the light would be like a kerosene lamp. And as long as you put oil in there, also whale oil was used to fuel these lamps. But there had to be oil in the lamp in order for the light to work. And in order for our light to shine, there must be oil in our lamps. So you say, Pastor, what is this oil? The Bible tells us that in the Old Testament, that oil was used for anointing. And the anointing was used for the prophet and then later for the king. Also in the New Testament, we see uh, oil. And the oil is also used for anointing. The, no, the oil is also symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And so whenever you were going to be used in the service of the Lord, you were anointed with oil. Whenever you were going to be used to do something for the Lord and be set aside and to, and, and in the case of the king, to be anointed so that, uh, so that the presence of God would move on you. What they believed in the Old Testament is every time you anointed someone, that the spirit of the Lord would move on them. And so as the as we look forward into the New Testament, we find the oil having a, a, a similar uh, symbolism that when the oil is used, it's also used for anointing people for healing. You know, the Bible says that if there are any sick among you, you anoint them with oil. So we see oil using for healing, but oil is also used to anoint and to represent the Holy Spirit. And so uh, when we look at what it is that those virgins had to have more of in order to be ready, they had to have more oil ready for their vessels. And so when we look at the oil, we said, well, Lord, you know, what is it that we need? What is it that we need in order to be ready? Lord, what is it that we need to do? When you come again, we can come with you. We don't want to be lost. We don't want to go to hell. I don't know if you know it, but there's a a real hell not a play play hell but a real hell and the bible says that those who don't go with him will go to hell and you know so much so that the church for a long time uh would only preach about sin would only preach about going to hell and so people start preaching about hell but how many of you know whether we stop preaching about it or not there is a real hell just like there's a real heaven there is a real hell um but there is a real heaven and that there is a real hell. Can you just make sure? Can you check on that? Make sure. Yeah. There is a real heaven and there is a real hell. And you, even if you don't go to heaven, you're going to hell. And back in the day, we were a little uh, afraid of people talking about hell so much because they say, well, you run people away. And people only come to God because they're fearful. But people did come to God. We talked about, the church talked about sin, and we talked about hell, and people did come to God. And so we turned away from it, I guess not to offend, and not so much everything is focused on hell and sin. And as a result, we do come to church, we do rejoice in church, but we don't check our lives. We don't check our lives to make sure that our lives are in line with the word of God. So when we think about the oil, when we think about the oil in the vessel and the presence of the Holy Spirit, how many of you know he does not dwell in an unclean temple? So when we think about the oil and we think about the presence of God, then what comes to mind is, Lord, what do we need to do to make sure we're not like the foolish virgins? 
What do we do to make sure that when you come again, that we're ready for your coming, that we can be caught up to meet you in the air and to evermore live with the Lord? You know, the, I, I, remember, I remember when my father was baptized in Jesus' name. I remember when he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I thought to myself, you know, well, Lord, thank God it was years later, but Lord, I'm glad, at least now he can die because when he dies, now he gonna go on to be with the Lord he wasn't sick but I had sense enough to know that it doesn't make sense to have a hard life in this life doesn't make sense to work and take care of everybody else in this life and die and spend eternity in hell it just don't make sense look at somebody and tell them it just don't make sense I mean if you go you know you say well things don't go right I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth and oh I wish I had this and wish I had that it would be a shame to leave this life and die and live in hell for eternity. But the day that he gave his life to Christ, I said, Lord, I thank you. You know, many of us don't have what other people have. Many of us will never have what other people have. But if you have the power and the spirit of God on the inside, if you've been regenerated by the power of the Holy Ghost, if you said yes to God and yes to his word, and you're willing to walk that narrow way to be with him. i got some good news news for you. When he comes back again, he said, I've got some mansions for you. He said, if it were not true, I would not have told you so. But I've gone ahead before you and I prepared for you a place. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise. If you know that he prepared a place for us. He prepared a place for us. So then we said, well, pastor, what do I have to do to have oil in my vessel? You know, he's one of those kind of sermons that, you know, you shake people up and you make us, more, you know, a sermon that kind of make us think, you know, how am I living my life? Lord, if I, am I living pleasing to you? God, am I walking according to your word? Lord, am I living under my own way instead of your way? And so the Bible tells us there's some things in which we do that helps us to keep oil in the vessel. One of the things that we do is we stay in the word of God. Not only do we hear it, but we do it. It's one thing to be a hearer of the word. It's another thing to do the word. That means whatever the words say, that's what we do. There's a scripture that talks about the fruit of the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit is love. The fruit of the spirit is joy. The fruit of the spirit is long suffering. And the Bible goes on kindness, gentleness, meekness. That means when people People come up against you. They ought to see the fruit of the spirit being uh, displayed in your life. When people come up against you, they ought to say, oh, there's something different about those birds. They don't, they, 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 don't, they don't talk like everybody else. They don't act like everybody else. They, you know, they have love. And you say, Pastor, well, how can you love somebody the way God says to love them? You only could love somebody the way God says to love them by the spirit of God. He said, we pray for those who, uh, who you Use us and we pray for those who uh, wish us ill and we do good for those who don't do good to us. And you say, well, Lord, what does that do? He said, if somebody's good to you and you good to them, then where is your reward? Everybody does that. You good to me, I'm going to be good to you. Everybody does that. He said, but I want you to be good to those who despitefully use you. That's the kind of love we're talking about. He talked about that a person who uh, uh, have the fruit of the Spirit is a person who has joy. Don't you know that the joy of the Lord is your strength? And it's through only through him that you don't let the enemy steal your joy. You say, well, thing didn't go right. I didn't get the job. Hold your head up. The same God that gave you the last job going to give you this job. Hold your head up. Things didn't go right at home. Hold your head up. Your trust is not in the home. Your trust is in your God. God will turn things around for your favor. Oh, I'm sad because I didn't get a good report at the doctor's. How many of you know that God is your healer? Whose report will you believe? I will believe, believe the report of the Lord. So we have joy even in sorrow. There was a person came to me and they said, uh, and in fact, I had a similar testimony. They took a, a MRI and it was for something else. And they said, we see a spot on your, on your kidney. And they said, but we don't know what it is. So we're going to wait a year and we'll take a look again. And so a year came and they took a look and they said, well, you must have been moving through the MRI. You must have been moving because the spot 
is not there anymore. And the only way the spot could have been gone is that it was never there. Oh, y'all need to give God praise in his house. Because what, what, why, what are you saying? I'm saying that God is our healer. We don't have to worry when we get bad news. God is our healer. So we can still have joy even in the midst of a bad uh, diagnosis. And so the Bible goes on. We have long suffering. And you know, it's good we have long suffering for our, you know, people maybe close to us, our children, our family. But he didn't say that. You have long suffering for the person who, who, who rub you the wrong way. Why? Because it's part of the fruit of the Spirit. Why? Because you're showing that you have, uh, 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 that you are an ambassador for Christ. Why? Because you're not presenting yourself as if though you were in this kingdom. Remember, you are also a citizen of the kingdom of God. And so you act like you're a citizen of the kingdom of God. So not only do we hear the word, but we do the word. Not only do we do the word, the Bible tells us, but we study it and we meditate on it. The scriptures, Paul, uh, David says that your word, oh God, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Lord, I take your word because if I take your word, it allow me to live right. God, if I take your word in my heart, Lord, it allow me to think right. Because the Bible tells us that it is the word of God that washes us. It's the word of God that gives us instruction. It is the word of God that we live by. Not by our manifesto, but by the word of God. You have people now talking and they say, this is my truth. You ain't got no truth. It ain't but one truth. It is the word of God. Oh, y'all need to give God praise. It ain't but one truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. You need the word. So what does that mean? It means I need to hear it, and I need to not only hear it, but I need to be a doer of it. I need to walk like he said I should walk. He said that I am not my own. I'm bought with a price. You said it's my thing. I could do what I want to do. He said it's not your thing. I bought your thing. You got to do it the way I tell you to do it. But if you do it the way I tell you to do it, some things going to open up for you. Y'all don't hear me in this place. If you do it God's way, some things going to have to open up for you. Because the children of God are covered by the grace of God and the grace of God gives you good things you don't deserve you say well pastor I never went to school you I mean I want you to go to school I went I went five times got five different degrees but if you don't go to school the grace of God still rests on your life you say pastor I think I missed my I missed my opportunity I should have got married then and now I don't know honey you you can't miss it in God because God is a God that's not bound by time. He was here before time began and he'll be here when time ends. He is God. So don't look at your situation and say you missed it. When you and God, honey, you didn't miss anything because God will turn things around in your favor. God will stop time on your behalf. You don't have to worry about what well, Lord, I, honey, with the Lord on your side, you don't have to worry about what you didn't do. Somebody ought to put your hands together and bless him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ought to put your hands together and bless him. And so it is the word of God. And the word of God tells us how we're supposed to behave. Tell us how we're supposed to live our life. Spell, tells us how we're supposed to walk uh, before the Lord. And if we walk before the Lord in that way, then we're keeping ourselves ready. We're keeping ourselves ready for his coming again. When it's coming again, we're not, uh, you, you know, we're not caught off guard because we're looking for him to come. We're not so busy with planning planning and preparing for everything else and getting ready for everything else uh, that we're not getting ready for the coming of the Lord. Glory to God. Uh, oh, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Uh, and the Bible tells us that it's not, it's not only the word of God, uh, but, it's, but that is the lamp unto our feet. That is the way in which we should walk. It's not how we figured it, not how we designed it. It's according to the word of God. God. 
And also we find uh, as, 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 as part of our uh, private spiritual disciplines is that we should worship the Lord. And I know you say, well, I worship when I come to church. How many of you know you should worship when you're not at church? How many know you should worship in your kitchen? And you should work up in the car. And you should worship on your job. And you should worship. Oh, I mean, I mean you should worship him. And the Bible says uh, that his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, that means you ain't continually talking about people, but you're continually talking about God. Uh, that means you're not continually saying all kind of stuff, out of, but you're continually saying good things and testifying about your God. Uh, is there anybody here this morning, hallelujah, who, war, who believe in worshiping the Lord? And when we worship him, that our atmosphere shifts. I don't know if you'd notice, but you, you know, sometimes when you come into the house of the Lord and as we begin to worship, the atmosphere begins to shift and you say, oh, I feel he's, he's in. It's the same way in your kitchen. You worship God the same way in your car. Worship. You don't wait till Sunday to worship God. You worship God throughout the week. And as you worship him, he keeps you in a place. He keeps you in a place where you're connected to him. As you worship him, everything in your life becomes smaller to him. You know, the enemy tried to discourage us. He tries to discourage us on a regular basis. Because he knows if he could discourage you, then you can say, I'm not coming to church today. If he can discourage you, then you'll say, well, I'm, I'm not going to pray today. I, I, this is a hard one. This is a hard one. Well, pray. If it's a hard one, pray. Well, I, I'm just discouraged. I'm so discouraged. I, I thought this was the job. And it didn't come through, and I'm so discouraged. If, if, you, if there were ever a reason to worship, this is the reason to worship. The enemy try to make you hold your worship and hold God hostage for your worship because you didn't get what you want. But he said the rocks will cry out. So you can hold your worship if you want. He's still God. But if you, if you open your mouth and you release that worship, when you get bad news, release the worship. When you get good news, release the worship. When you wake up in the morning, release the word. Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. I know it wasn't the alarm clock. Thank you, God. I can get out of my bed and get me a glass of water. Nobody got to go get it and bring it to me. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm clothed and I'm in my right mind. God, I thank you. Lord, I know everybody didn't wake up this morning, but you, with your gracious hand, will, and I bless your holy name. Wake up with a praise in your mouth. Wake up with a worship in your mouth. Set the tone for the day. The third thing is to pray. On Friday night in our prayer, a midnight cry, the speaker said, remind us, pray without ceasing. Well, one, one way you pray with, without ceasing is through the Holy Spirit. That's why we talk about receiving the Holy Spirit. Because you can live the life, but honey, it's so much easier with the Holy Ghost. Because he is your helper. He is your strength. He gives you what you need for the journey. And so as we pray, he tells us pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit. We don't know how to pray as we are. Some of that stuff on you is on you because you're not praying. Well, pastor, that's not true. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's true. But when you pray, God going to bring you out of all of them with the victory. Every single one of them, you coming out with the victory. Every single one of them, you coming out with the victory. You know, I'm about to close, but one of the reasons you don't hear me complaining about haters, because I know haters are not in control of my destiny. I'm not worried about who don't like me and who talking about me and what they say. I can't, I'm human. I can't say I might not be hurt if I see something. But how many of you know that I got good enough sense to know that you are not the Lord of my life? The person that say something bad and you're hating on it, they are not the Lord of your life. The Lord of your life is in control of your life. And whatever God got for you, it is for you. Can nobody stop what God has for you? Oh, you ought to bless him this morning. They can say what they want to say. They can't keep God from blessing you. 
They can talk about you like they want to. They can't keep God from blessing you. And so we need to pray. We need to pray. And of course, uh, it is important that as we as we worship the Lord, as we uh, uh, seek the Lord in prayer and, uh, and be connected with him. How many of you know prayer is fellowship with him? For, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, we're, if, if so we're praying without ceasing, we're in fellowship without ceasing. It means that even when we, we, are, we are working, we're doing our things, that our spirit is connected to him. You know, all throughout the day, I hear a song in my spirit. Is there anybody? And then the song I've been hearing is, uh, you, know, you are champion. You are champion. Lord, you are champion. So all day, all the day, my chest is stick out. My God is champion. My God fights for me. My God delivers me. My God opens doors for me. My God makes ways for me. My God delivers me. He is champion. All through the day, I hear it. I'm taking care of business. As soon as I get quiet, I hear, my God, he's champion. I mean, I just keep it hearing it over and over. Whatever you feed yourself is going to get down in your spirit. And even when you got to go take care of your job, your spirit is still talking to God. Y'all don't hear me in this place. You still washing the dishes, taking care of the children. They mad because they can't put on the red shirt and you already pick out the white shirt and they're giving you a fit. But your spirit is still singing and praying. You know, the Bible talks about spiritual songs. Pastor, why is it that you have that spiritual song? Because I feed myself spiritual things. You know, I'm, I promise I'm getting ready to close. You know, when I, I used to be with my friends and we would watch something, movie sometime, and something come on that don't look quite right, and I get up and leave, and they say, you scared. I'm talking about specifically about sex scenes. This was back in the day. And I told them, yeah, because I go home by myself. And I want to live holy. Y'all don't hear me. You know you celibate because you serve the Lord, but you're going to look at something that's going to make you not want to be. Come on, y'all. You're a human being. God made you a sexual being. God made you a sexual being. God created. It's, God, it's all God's idea. But he has a design for it. So when I see something I know it's going to mess with me, I say, uh-uh, I'm out. Because I got sense enough to know that now I got something I'm going to have to fight with. I got to fight anyway, but I don't want to give more, I don't want to give more ammunition to the enemy. If you're in the flesh, you're going to fight anyway. How many of you know your flesh is never saved? I don't care how long you get saved, your flesh is never saved. Might, Y'all might not know that. Your flesh is never saved. So what do we have to do to keep that oil in the vessel? We got to pray. What do we got to do to keep that oil in the vessel? We got to get in the word of God and stay in the word of God. What do we got to do to keep that oil in the vessel? We got to worship God in the morning. His praise continually in our mouth. In the morning and in the night. We should end the day with worshiping God. We should start the day with worshiping God. Why? Because we want oil in our vessel. So when he come again, we'll be ready. When he come again, we'll have oil in our vessel. And the Bible tells us that the foolish version said, give us some of your oil. You know, people don't want to pray. They just want to get close to somebody who does pray. People don't want to fast. They just want to get close to somebody who does fast. People don't want to get in the word. They just want to get close to somebody who gets in the word. Honey, I don't, you know, it seemed like so selfish saying you can't have my oil. Do y'all hear what I say? You can't have, you know what the, you know what the, you know what the wise virgin told them? They said, go buy from the one who sell it for yourself and get it. I can't give you my oil. Because if I give you my oil, then I'm not going to be ready. But you can get your oil from the one who sell it. What are you talking about? That means there's a price to be paid. You got to deny yourself. You got to pick up your cross and you got to follow the Lord. The enemy don't want you to make that decision today. Come on, stand to your feet. The enemy does not want you to make that decision today. Thank you so much. He doesn't want you to make that decision but honey, I got some good news for you. That's the best decision that you can make in your life. To say, Lord, I want you to be the Lord of my life. My God. God, I want you to be the boss of my life. I'm going to live for you. 
You know, sometimes I go through things and things are serious and I say, you know, I think about it and I said, Lord, people leave God for these kinds of things. When things don't quite work out or when you feel like God has done something that you don't necessarily want him to do or or, or, or he did, you want him to do something and he didn't do it. Sometimes you, uh, you know, you get so down. And, but, you know, I remember telling God a long time ago, I don't know what I get I'm grateful for, what you do for me I'm grateful for. But, Lord, nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. It's not a deal breaker. You know, some people say, Lord, if you don't do it, I'm going to leave and I'm going to do it myself. If you don't do this and you don't do that, then I'm, I'm you know, here's what they like to say. I'm mad with God. Well, I, I mean, God can handle it. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. You could be mad with God because God can handle it. But I say, Lord, where can I go? Who am I going to go to? Who has the words of eternal life except you? Where can I go but to the Lord? can't go to the world because the world will turn on you. They like you when you're beautiful and when you got it together and when you this or that, but when you're down, they're the first one that put you down. Yeah, have you seen her? Yeah, she long. Yeah, man, she, they're the first ones that put you down when you get down. But, but, but when we're down in the presence of the Lord, he lifts us up. He, he, said, you, he said, you know what? He said, you belong to me. He said, you don't belong. The reason you can't fit out there is because you don't belong there. You belong to me. You are my child. And some of you in this place this morning, you know you belong to God. You know God is talking to you. You know you want to be ready when he comes again. You know, in this story, the Bible says that when they see, he said, no, you got to go buy for yourself. The Bible said that, that, that the, the door was shut. And he said to the foolish versions, I never knew you. And we find that scripture again where, the, you know, they said, Lord, I cast out demons in your name. Lord, I heal people in your name. Lord, I did great miracles in your name. And you know what he said? Depart from me, your work was of iniquity. He said, I never knew you. In this passage, we see it again. Verse number 13. I believe I didn't read it. But verse number 13, he said, I never knew you. How? And when I saw 50%, it kind of messed me up. How could half of us set up in the church? Half of us set up in the church and go to hell. How could it be? When he's standing here every day, people might remember what you've done. God don't remember what you've done. People might try to judge you. God said, I didn't come to condemn you. That's what Jesus said. He said, I come to bring you life. I'm not in the condemning business. I'm in the saving business. Half of them set up in the church, half of them, and missed the rapture. If I were you, I would just say, Lord, this is the day. Come on, lift your hands in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift our hands to you. Lord, we lift our hands to you, oh God. And Lord, we say, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Lord, we don't want to be good to people, Father, and miss you. Lord, we don't want to do works in the church, my God. We don't want to preach to others and then ourselves be a castaway. Lord, we don't want to lay hands on the sick and they recover and then you tell us you don't even know us. Lord, create a clean heart in me. And renew a right spirit within me. God, don't take your spirit from me. Father, we lift our hands and we thank you. God, for anointing us afresh with fresh oil. Come on and receive it this morning. Lord, we need fresh oil. God, all that make us say yes to you and no to ourselves. Yes, Lord, to you and no to ourselves. Lord, fresh oil. God, we want to be ready when you come. Not because of us, but because your work through us. Not because we got it right, but you got it right in us. Not not because we are good, but you are good, God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for renewing in us this morning. 
Lord, we thank you not a soul in this church will miss the rapture in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just declare over your people this morning, we receive your word, God. We receive your word, God. We receive your word. You died so that we would be with you. You made heaven for us. And Lord, I declare it over your people that hearts are open unto you right now, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we receive that fresh anointing, that fresh oil. Thank you for giving us a hunger and thirst for you. Father, we look at everything in our life and we say it's not a deal breaker. Because, Lord, where would we go if we left you? Where would we go if we didn't serve you? Where would we go if we didn't love you, God? Fresh anointing, fresh anointing. Somebody shout fresh oil. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare it over your people in Jesus' name. If you receive it, give God praise. If you receive it, give God praise. If you receive it, give God praise. If you receive that fresh oil this morning. If you receive that fresh oil this morning. Hallelujah. Is there someone here this morning you don't know Jesus Christ? And I feel God in this place. Do y'all feel the spirit of the Lord? Yeah, no, 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 Moshe. He's coming again. He's coming. You know, we don't we don't shout it like we used to shout it. The Bible said in the, in, the, in the parable, they yelled, the bridegroom has come. The bridegroom, we don't shout it. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. We don't shout it like we used to shout it. Jesus is coming again. Is there someone here? You don't know him in the pardon of your sins. I want you to know that the Jesus we've been talking about is a Jesus of grace. What does that mean? That means he has more grace than you have sin. That means you can't say, well, Lord, I did so and so and so. You're not going to want me. Honey, I died for that. <laughs> Lord, you know, Lord, this morning I messed up. I died for that. Well, Lord, I, I still got something back at home that ain't right. I died for that. I don't care what it is, God loves you with an everlasting love. This is not for condemnation. This is for correction. And with correction, we're going to be with the Lord. Is there anyone here who does not know the Lord in the pardon of your sin? You don't know him in the pardon of your sin, but you say, I want to know him. I want to know him. Preacher, I want to know him like you're talking about. I want to know him. I want a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want it. I want it. I don't want to leave this place without it. I want it. I want it. I want it in the name of Jesus. Is there anybody here? Anybody here say, I want to live for the Lord. I, I've been walking the wrong way. I've been walking away from him and not to him. But today I changed my mind. You know, that's what repentance is. It means I've been walking this way, but I turned and I'm going to walk this way. Why? Because I turned my back on what I was doing. And I'm walking to him instead of away from him. Is there anybody here? You say, Lord, I, I, want, you to, I, want, I, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to be the boss of me. Anybody want the the Lord to be the boss of them come on come on this is for you come on come on this is for you hallelujah is there one is there one glory to God is there one hallelujah oh I feel the presence of the Lord here is there one is there... favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you 